This is our last video for chapter P of your textbook. So this is just going to review the graphs of trigonometric functions. The trigonometric functions are all called periodic functions, and they're called that because technically it means that f of x is equal to f of x plus p, where p is the period. But non-technically, or in a way that we can understand it, it means that the period is how long it takes for the graph to repeat itself. So if I look at y equals sine of x, if I drew a line at negative 2 pi and 0, and then at 0 and 2 pi, I can see that from negative 2 pi to 0 and from 0 to 2 pi, that's the exact same graph. I could pick it up and move it over to the right, and it would be the same graph. It would line up exactly. That's the same way for cosine of x, negative 2 pi, 0, 2 pi. Again, it takes 2 pi for it to repeat itself. So for y equals sine of x and its inverse, cosecant of x, y equals cosine of x and its inverse, y equals secant of x, the period is going to be 2 pi because it takes 2 pi for it to repeat itself. If I look at tangent and cotangent, again, inverses of one another, we can see that the period to repeat itself is pi. So from negative pi to 0 to pi is exactly the same. Or more appropriately, we would look at the pi over 2s because we could see the whole part of that figure. Same thing here. It's going to take just pi for that graph to repeat itself. Let's take a look now at the amplitude and period of the function. So again, we can alter the six graphs by having some value a or b, whereas a is going to affect the amplitude. Now that is only for um, sine and cosine. So if you'll see here, I've got y equals a sine x b. This is that regular function we just scrapped. Notice the lowest point is negative 1 and the highest point is 1. But if I increase a, look exactly what happens to that sine function. That is called the amplitude. It tells us how high or low that function is going to go. Uh, notice if I switch it to negative, what happened to the graph? Well, of course, as usual, it would flip over the x-axis. Um, with b, b is going to affect the period of the function. So we know the period right now is 2 pi. Again, we looked at that drawing a line at negative 2 pi and 0. But if I were to increase b, notice that period gets much smaller, or decrease b, um, let me decrease without going negative, notice that the period gets much larger. So it takes more than 2 pi to repeat the function. So we get the idea um, for both a and b. Now that's going to be the same for sine of x and for cosine of x. The amplitude is going to change. And of course, b is the period. So now let's look at secant. So a does not affect the amplitude, but it does affect sort of the starting point. So if you'll notice when a is, let me put it to positive. Let's put a as positive 3. Notice that that's the sort of the valley. So the peak and the valley are happening at negative and positive 3. And then again, b would make the period much smaller. Same thing for cosecant. So a much smaller period, a much larger period. And then of course, if we go negative, we know what happens there. And then again, same thing with A. It's normally at one. And then if I increase it, that's just going to change where that hill or valley will occur. Now let's look at tangent. So again, let's go back to one. When in doubt, just put it in yourself. Okay, so we have the regular function. Now what's happening with A? Sort of straightening that out. Again, not called an amplitude, um, but it gives us an idea of what's going to happen to the graph. And then again, with B is going to change the period, and that's going to be the same with co cotangent. B is going to change the period, and A is going to affect the um, curvature of the line. 
In section P.3, we talked about the basic transformations of graphs, and I'm here to say that they're exactly the same for trig functions as they are for anything else. So if I wanted to horizontally shift, I would include some value um, inside the bracket, so x plus 2, sine of x plus 2. If I wanted to vertically shift it, I would put the plus 2 on the outside, and then of course all of the reflections. I could do sine of negative x, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to go through a ton of that because again we already talked about that. Again if I want tangent of um, x minus 4, oops, and how did that change from this? That's just a horizontal shift, but if I wanted a vertical shift I would put the minus 4 on the outside and we can see that curve is now happening down here at the negative 4. So again, all of the same transformations as any of the other kinds of graphs, um, same for trigonometric functions. Coming up next, we are going to move on to chapter 1, so we are going to officially begin our journey into calculus.